The problem seems to be that people are worried about their health, what little bit they have left, and trying to avoid some kind of disease without working. They want a magic herb or a magic pill to save them, and that's not how it works. Essentially, your life is a health story. It's how you live, how you relate to other people, and how you handle stress. It's nothing wrong with stress. It's just stress in the wrong places. There's nothing wrong with stress. There's nothing wrong with hate. There's nothing wrong with anger. It's just how you use it. We have health, and people are taking our health from us. White people are not evil people. They're just acting white. Dogs are not evil. They're just acting like a damn dog. So get over it. They're just acting like they're white. That's all. You need to act like you're black. That's the issue. Don't try to change anybody. Change yourself. Don't even worry about it. One lesson to know is that if you see somebody do something and you don't understand it, or if somebody tells you something and you don't understand it, or somebody acts a certain way and you just don't understand it, it's because they did it emotionally. Emotions is another logic system from logic. When you, somebody says, why did they say that to me? I don't understand why they said it for emotional reasons. And that's our issue. We do not have an emotional vocabulary. We do not have an emotional expense account. We do not have an emotional budget. We are ruled by our emotions. You do not eat from McDonald's or whatever, the Burping King, all these other freaks, because of logic. You eat from them for emotional reasons. Happy faces, going places, cemetery probably. So what I'm saying is you have to understand this thing called emotions. The hell with everything else. Facts have never ruled the world. There's never been a war fought in history over a fact. Wars are fought over emotions. So we have to get come in contact with what is this all about? Where did it all come from? And that's uh, probably what I'm going to talk about for about 15 minutes. And then I'll talk about some remedies, you know, arthritis, diabetes, stuff that people want to hear me talk about. But I'm telling you, it's emotions that got you on this trouble. And the only way to get out of this is emotionally. Now, where do emotions come from? Who taught us about emotions? A man called Socrates, a Greek. He taught another man called Plato, and Plato wrote about emotions. He's the one who came up with subconscious and conscious and preconscious. That is a white concept. He's the one who came up with my first mind told me I should do this. But where's your second mind, damn it? They came up with these concepts, and we're using it. You cannot access black intelligence with a white program. You cannot access black intelligence with a white program. That's what I'm trying to say. Everything starts from the root. If you want to grow a tree, it grows from the root. In biology, we call it a stem. If you want to grow a kidney, you've got to get a stem cell. To grow a kidney. You got to get the root. Everything starts from the root. Emotions start from the root. The brain stem. That's what I'm trying to say. And you do not just use your brain to think. We've proven that over and over and over again. In something called neuroimaging. You think with your bones. You think with your muscles. You think with your glands. You use your whole body to think. Sometimes you just use your bones, you say that's intuition. Sometimes you use your glands, you say, a thought came to me. No, it didn't. You were just using another part of your body. You use your whole body to be dumb. You use your whole body to be stupid. You use your whole body to be intelligent. And any skill you have, you have to practice. If you want to be good at golf, you got to practice. If you want to be good at soccer, you got to practice. And if you want to be good at being dumb, you've got to practice. I went off to a white man's school, 
you know, and I came home, and my grandmother was uh, came out of slavery. I don't know if some of y'all know about that one. So slaves didn't talk that much. Because some of the slaves were coconuts. You know, they just tell a massa. So slaves were very quiet. So my grandmother was very quiet. And I used to try to get information from her. I said, Grandma, they tell me, how was, how was, what you doing on slavery? I want to know. She said, child, it was this, them times. And that's all she ever said. It was just them times. I couldn't understand why she wouldn't tell me anything, you know. All she would say is, is it was just them times. So I was taking a class because I used to be a psychotherapist, you know, help people with rape and uh, suicide and paranoid schizophrenia, and people with their own bowel movements, normal crazy people. So um, I was telling her I was studying uh, whatever, oh, rape. And I was telling her, you know, these techniques we knew used to help people who have been raped. One out of seven black men have been raped. One out of four black women have been raped. Let's get over that one. Men don't get raped in prison. They bring rape into prison. Are you clear with me? Men rape men higher than they rape women. Are you still clear with me? One out of seven black men have been raped. One out of four black women have been raped. When's the last time a black man talked to you about being raped? I'm just trying to bring it to reality, too, here. So I was just telling my grandma, I was saying, Grandma, you know, I'm in school. She said, yeah, I know, you, you're educated. So I said, I'm studying rape. She said, you studying what? And she laughed at me. She said, child, all we do is just wipe ourselves off and keep walking. Do you understand where she, how, what kind of reality she had to live in to say that? All, all we do is wipe ourselves off and keep walking. I said, damn. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's why she couldn't talk about so much stuff because it was just so much stuff. Nonetheless, what I'm trying to say is the system, the male system is very fragile. It's not made of concrete. The female system is very strong. A woman can have triplets. It's, a, it's built. But the male system, please, Sesame Street 101. It's just not built for anything. You know. Nonetheless, the way to stop this problem what they call erectile dysfunction, which is the male word for impotency. is to stop damaging your reproductive system. What happens is the body is on a program that started about 2 million billion years ago. You with me here? It's, we, we're really prehistoric kind of people. So this system that the nature put in place is 2 billion years old. So... When you eat a raisin, the body says, I don't know this. I only know grapes. I only know grapes. I don't know raisin. When you eat white rice, the body says, I don't know this. I, I know that wild nigger rice, black rice, you know, brown rice, but I don't know this white rice. It wasn't there when I was created. And what's the stuff you're putting in me now? The body gets confused. Says, I don't know it. So when you, when you eat a raisin the body puts the water back into the raisin before it digests it do you understand what i'm saying so if you're not drinking extra water where is the water coming from that the body's putting back into the raisin to make it into a grape it's coming from your nerves your muscles your bones your reproductive system that's what i'm trying to say so if you're eating this white rice, the body says, where's the vitamins and minerals and fiber that went with this rice? Because it's going to make it the way God made it. So not, then it knows it, then it can digest it. So it pulls that moisture and vitamins and minerals, amino acids from your bones, your muscles, your glands, and your penis. Yeah. So if you're just trying to be a dick saver, you've got to follow this, this kind of diet. But I'm saying the harm is done because the food was harmed. You harm the food and you eat it, the food harms you. Simple. You harm the food by processing it, making white sugar, because we never made white sugar for black people. We were put on plantations and made white sugar for white people. But since we're free, we want to eat white man's food. You know, you know it's crazy. That white sugar was a addicting drug. So... I have a, everything I'm saying is written down. I don't just flip around. It's written down with the research and all that kind of stuff that people like to see. 
this is not a difficult thing to do. The difficult thing is to overcome our conditioning. The difficult thing is to overcome how we were taught before we were uh, taught, <laughs> how we were miseducated and all that sort of rut. I don't think this problem is going to be corrected overnight. I do not expect it to be corrected overnight. If I come back next year, some of y'all will be dead. I'm facing reality. You're facing your fantasy. Some of you will have arthritis. Some of you will, I'm telling you, some of you will have diabetes. I'm telling you facts. You live in a fantasy. The greatest nation in the world is imagination. And that's where they live. I'm telling you the facts. Some of you won't even remember your own name. I don't know what my name is. <laughs> yeah. Talk like a Walmart greeter. So, we got to face the reality of our own situation before we can look at the reality of someone else's situation.